Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this beautiful planet we live on. It is the Earth Master here on this Thursday. We got Friday right around the corner tomorrow, 1223 p.m. California time. November 30th is the last day here of the month. We start off a new month tomorrow. Goodness. 5.1 earthquake up in Alaska, fairly recent, although the most recent earthquake here looks like it's going to be some movement out in the Atlantic uh, with a 3.0 uh, coming in near the Azores area. We'll check out the Iceland activity here in just a little bit. I want to cover first the potential for some pretty awesome aurora conditions here tonight. Uh, now this is going to be for tonight. Uh, tomorrow's forecast shows what looks like still a continuance there of potential auroras, uh, but a little bit higher up into the northern tier states tonight. Well, we have the potential of maybe seeing these down into more, uh, Oregon, uh, Idaho for sure, Wyoming. Now this is the view line here, this red line indicating the view line. Potentially, if you were beyond this point further down south, you may be able to see it with a DSL uh, R camera. Maybe something that takes a long duration type of exposure, longer exposure. Uh, but for certain, if you're within this line here uh, tonight, you may have a pretty good chance of seeing this G3 class solar storm that's coming up. Um, don't miss it. We'll check out cloud cover here in just a second. But there is definitely the potential for that to take place tonight uh, with the Space Weather Prediction Center issuing that uh, that watch tonight for G3 solar storm now the current conditions show well awfully quiet there's not a whole lot coming in here now we are starting to approach the nighttime hours here across the east coast and uh, obviously up north into canada portions of uh, uh new york and stuff like that getting uh, close to dark it has not kicked up yet i was just looking at the real-time solar wind stream here this is let me make sure I got the most recent data. Kind of hard to understand, right? Just little dots. Either way, these graphs would tell us something if a CME did hit. Now, it looks like um, earlier, uh, yeah, earlier there was a slight interruption here in the BZ component, BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field that allowed, it looks like a little bit of density to kick up and the speed was somewhat elevated as well. Um, but there's a little blackout here, so I'm not 100% certain how accurate that is. But looking at the most recent data here, I do not see any signs of a CME impact, not even the first one. If that was the first one, then it just uh, almost completely missed us. Um, but we do have the arrival of maybe two to three as a combined CME. Uh, that is expected to bring those G3 class storming conditions uh, later tonight. Now, the forecast calls for, see exactly when this is supposed to kick up here. Uh, detailed forecast. So it's going to hit between, looks like it's really going to start picking up between 0 and 600 UTC time. Okay, so the current UTC time is going to be uh, 2026 here. That's UTC time for everyone. Now, we got at least, uh, it looks like maybe four hours or so before things start to kick back up um, and we start seeing things really ramp up. So this may be a late event, early morning type scenario uh, for the arrival of those uh, couple CMEs that are headed our direction. So if you're willing to stay up and watch it, I think we're going to see something good. Um, you know, there's definitely, uh, it was a square dead on hit from that, uh, M 9.8 that hit uh, a couple days ago, right? It did produce a pretty significant CME, uh, and the weather model, well, at least the space weather prediction center does show the arrival of that CME hitting us. Uh, most weather models, or at least, uh, space weather models predicting that to, uh, hit earth with, uh, some decent plasma density uh speed should be picked up as well far as the elevated uh speed activity that does play a part on the effect of the magnetic field of the earth uh, you combine all of these together and hopefully uh, we'll see those um, g3 conditions spark up a bunch of auroras uh, later tonight again the view line 
The uh, visible line is where to go. Oh, right here. Uh, right here in this area, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, potentially maybe a little bit further south, depending on how the magnetic field behaves with the arrival of this uh, couple CMEs headed our direction. All right, uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. The rest of space weather activity, let me make sure, double check, I, got, I think I got it refreshed here. Uh, flaring activity, uh, currently a little bit of flaring coming in from a far side um, sunspot region figures <clears throat> this area, this massive region that has been uh, facing us for the past few days, uh, finally decides to kick up a little bit. But this is pretty much out of sight, out of mind, not going to be geo effective in terms of uh, if it were to produce a CME. Obviously, the light from this, uh, the effects of the flare, um, will reach a planet here in like eight minutes or so. It's a lot different than the uh, CMEs. We'll go into that in a totally different video. But that's kind of acting up slightly with some sea flaring kicking up right now. And uh, the main spot that I'm kind of looking at uh, is 3,500. Let's see what it looks like today. Um, it's still fairly complex. This is going to be this region down here. Uh, the current flare, the sea flare that we're seeing is from this sunspot. One of these uh, center cores acting up slightly. But I still think we have potential of seeing some uh, flaring within this region. And what's behind that? There's not a whole lot uh, of uh, potential. Unless some of these develop some, uh, some further complexity, it doesn't look like things are going to be active here following the, uh, the uh, departing of 3500. Right now, 99% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 10% still. And again, we got those uh, conditions sparking up later tonight. Don't miss out if you have the potential. Cloud cover potential? Well, let's look at that right now. This is the latest cloud cover. Obviously got, got potential for some severe weather down here, but I think all that cloud cover is uh, preventing and uh, tapering down the instability that uh, was forecasted here for the severe weather today. I'm going to kick this up here in the next few hours or so. Now, this is local time, my time. So we're going to zoom into about 4 p.m. or so. Uh, and, of course, 4 p.m. Pacific time and later across the eastern portion of the country. The area that's in the, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a yellow-brownish color. Uh, a lot of people like this color. I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, those are the clear skies. Obviously, there's some breaks in the clouds out here across the west. But a good portion here of the uh, southern plains and the Midwest area going to be inhibited from seeing a clear sky view tonight. But the northern tier states up here, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, you guys will probably have some clearing. Uh, looks like that maybe uh, in the forecast up there. Even later as we head into the evening, 11 o'clock my time, still fairly clear up here. So that's when the... Uh, when we should see those G3 storming conditions really amping up. Um, Kansas, unfortunately, it looks like there's quite a few cloud cover uh, potential out there tonight. But uh, best thing to do is just go out there and see if you got uh, a clear sky of the northern, clear view of the northern horizon and uh, see what you can see once things pick up later tonight. All right, uh, let me get into the Iceland uh, activity real quick here. Since we are having a little bit of movement out there in the Atlantic, that does play a part on what's going on in Iceland. The latest information, though, is from yesterday. They have not put out an update yet today. Uh, they're still saying that the uh, potential eruption area is north of Hagafell near the uh, Slingarfell area. Now, that's northeast of the Grindavik region. Grindavik is the town of Iceland, a little town down there. Um, let me bring up the earthquake map here and show you guys what we've had over the last 12 hours. Roughly about 43 earthquakes here on the map. Again, northeast of Grindavik. Although today we're noticing a little bit filling in here uh, further south towards that town, which is right here. Uh, most of the activity has been confined north of Hagafell within this little zone where they think the eruption is going to take place. Just east here, just north of Hagafell within this region right about here is where they think that uh, a fissure may open up. 
with this eruption, but uh, still just kind of watching it because we haven't really seen any major changes out here yet. Haven't really seen any complete die off or complete, uh, uh, you know, further huge uptick in earthquake activity. Uh, but I think we should see that at least have further increasing in a small confined area that will give us a, a definite region of where that's possibly going to break through. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. Let's see, what do we got for earthquake activity here uh, for the rest of the globe? There's an earthquake there in Alaska. They've been seeing a little bit of movement up here across the Aleutian Trench here in the last week. Uh, if we look at the last seven days of activity, we have seen a handful of earthquakes here in the four. And I think we even seen a 5.6 out there uh, a few days, a couple days ago along this uh, Aleutian Trench area. Uh, not too much here across the Kurokamachaka. Did see a little bit of activity stirring up here, but this is a region that has potential for some mega quake activity. It's been awfully quiet here. Uh, the past 24 hours obviously shows not a whole lot uh, across the Western Pacific. Now, there is some smaller earthquake activity taking place out here, uh, but it looks like it's definitely died down compared to last night. Last night was pretty cluttered out here, even stretching across the Java Trench. Uh, today, cluttering going on here across the Indonesia Islands area with a uh, movement still confined here around the Papua New Guinea area. I wonder if something's starting to build up here, uh, getting ready for some may, uh, possibly some larger quake activity. I have to keep an eye on that region. Uh, back further east here along the Tonga Trench, a pair of deep earthquakes into that region here. Uh, looks like one of those, at least the most recent, 606 kilometers deep for a 4.7. Goodness, about an hour or so ago. That should amplify further conditions here and stress across this region uh, of the plate boundary. The uh, general plate movement out here, the Pacific plate, when we see the deeper activity, make an adjustment downstream that obviously sends further pressure along this plate boundary and areas to the west here as a whole. Uh, New Zealand seen a 3.2 looks like, uh, well, that may be the Kermadec Trench. Not a whole lot showing up here on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe for New Zealand and the Big Island of Hawaii. Well, let's see what we got going on out here. This is another volcano, kind of keeping an eye on. No huge amount of earthquake activity. I'm really not seeing that. Uh, the latest, let's go to the latest information statement here from the HVO. See what's going on. That update was put out today. Kilauea Volcano is currently not erupting, and it's the same thing. Talking about the uh, tilt meters. Um, overall, the summit of Kilauea remains at a high level of inflation. Even above the level that was previously reached here in the eruption back in September. And the highest level since the 2018 eruption. So that was a little bit more complex. And uh, quite a bit of uh, activity spilling up there east of the... Um, of the summit region so i'll continue to watch that and keep an eye on it let me see uh i gotta go check out the inflation here real quick see what we're looking at on that chart uwe right here see if this one's going to work noticing a little bit of a downtrend here in the last few hours still elevated though um I notice these little spikes here are getting broader compared to the past couple graphs here where we've seen this little intermittent deflation. Uh, definitely watch this and see how it plays out. Um, if trend tells us anything, trends, uh, we should see this drop off here and level out for a couple days and then potentially kick back up. That's the way it's been over the past seven or eight runs here in terms of inflation and, def and deflation. Uh, so... This almost looks like there's one, two, three, maybe four little elevated areas in here. We should see this drop down. Now, if it continues to go up, something has changed with the influx and the intrusion of magma within this area. And uh, that's obviously going to be leading to an eruption here soon. question is how much uh, more is it going to take for this area uh, to see some, uh, some fissure activity. Looks pretty active out there right now in terms of uh, steam. Looks like a lot of vapor, water vapor in the air. Let's see if I can get a better, a little bit better view here of this area. Does look like it's cloudy out there. Maybe a little bit colder up here at the summit region. Uh, no visible 
lava, magma. This is just discoloring going on here across the area of the rock. But uh, for the most part, it just looks like as average. On these colder days, obviously things are going to look a lot more active if one would you know look at it. But it's all a matter of perspective here. These are obviously still some hot volcanic gases um, seeping up from the cracks in the surface and interacting with the colder air to create condensation, which in terms in term kind of makes it a little bit more active looking but really not all right uh nothing major going on yet folks in terms of the uh solar weather potential but we'll keep an eye on that and we'll cover it uh, i think we'll, if we do see that hitting kicking up in a big way we'll do a just a separate update on that uh to let you guys know that it's coming in but for now we'll just keep a watch see how this plays out for tonight's g3 storm possibility have a good one we'll catch you guys back here in a little bit